that is, again, it's a good argument. It makes total sense. Now try to move people off their 60-40 right now. Right, so this is kind of goes back to the point. Yes, there is a value there. Yes, it is intelligent. Dude. I've been doing this for ten years, as in reducing my exposure to sixty forty, and I've gotten burnt. So I'm going back to sixty forty. So, back to how do we, how do we get to kind of patch that up and also give people what they need in that transition period? Because eventually we'll get to the point like we did in the early knots or the mid knots, where people underweighted US and overweighted BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China. That's the place to be, right? The US was not the, the area you want it to be in. Um, so this is a, the paper was an attempt to do a yes and rather than a, there is only one way to diversify. And the yes and was um, facilitated by these capital efficient ETFs and mutual funds that it came out. Um, it, allowing us to really create a stacked uh, approach to, to the P&L that we can grab from different asset classes. So we start in the paper, once we recognize that advisors have, are not benefiting from a lower single digit return of alternatives, what you can do is, simple solution was grabbing the wisdom tree, uh, NTSX is the ticker, where they're basically grab the 60-40 portfolio and leave it up 150%. Right, so what you're getting when you buy, you, you give them a hundred dollars, you are getting ninety dollars of equity, and sixty dollars of bonds. And what we showed in the paper was how, when you grab NTSX since its inception and only allot it sixty-seven cents on the dollar, and compare it against a hundred cents on the dollar to the Vanguard Balance Fund, they are nearly identical. They're basically the same equity line, but the difference to the user of that product is that you have increased 33% of your portfolio real estate that you can do a myriad of things with, right? You can, if you think the markets are overvalued, but you can't not participate because your clients will fire you, you can just keep that in cash until the next COVID crash happens and then you, can, you have all this dry powder to back up the truck in the, in the asset classes and securities that you think are undervalued. That's one way to stack returns above that what you would get from simply buying and holding the Vanguard balance fund. Right, Corey, you also uh, went through another approach for to stacking like with the um, with the bonds. Why don't you give everybody an example of that? Yeah, you know, the stacking examples we gave in the paper are by no means prescriptive. They're just meant to be examples. But I think one of the questions that uh, people often think about when they're facing a low return environment is, well, okay, if I, if my beta is going to give me a low return, how can I get some alpha? And so the question becomes, uh, are you going to take your 60 and try to find managers that can consistently generate alpha for you over the next five, 10, 15 years? And the evidence is very thin, particularly in us large cap equities that you can find managers that can consistently do that. So one of the ways in which return stacking can be used is to get your core beta with 66 cents and then use the other 33 cents to allocate towards different risk premia that should realize much more consistently. So for example, you could take those $33 that Rodrigo mentioned that you freed up and put them in very short term, high quality corporate bonds. So maybe they're going to give you you know, 150 to 200 basis points a year, you get a 33% allocation, you end up with 60 bips. Well, now you get a 60, 40 plus another 60 bips of returns on top. And that's coming from an extra 33% exposure to very short term, very high quality corporate bonds. That's a pretty attractive proposition because I'm much more certain about that that 33 bit or that 30 bips or 60 bips is gonna be added on just about every year over the next 15 years versus me being able to find an active manager that can add some alpha. So, you know, particularly if you find uh, an actively managed bond fund where I think there's more evidence that alpha can be generated, I think you can use this form of return stacking to basically try to pick uh, places where you can add some excess return much more consistently. Mm -hmm.